First, you want to install the SDK, which can be found in the description. If you would rather have a text tutorial, you can look at the two readmes in the project. To get started with physics NPCs, open the example folder, the NPCs folder, the base folder, and select one of the NPCs you would like to start out with. For this tutorial, I will be using the regular Ford. However, you can give him the same AI as the other NPCs. Once you decide on your NPC, drag him into the scene. Next, unpack the prefab completely, and rename it to whatever you want the NPC to be named. Then, drag the prefab into the assets window, and delete the game object in the scene. In order to make a custom NPC, you need a rigged mesh. To check if the mesh is rigged, place the mesh in the scene, and then check if you are able to move its bones. If you can, it's rigged, and is usable for the NPC. It does not have to match the NPC's rig completely, as long as it is similar enough to where it'll look good in-game. Next, open up the object you dragged into the assets window earlier. Then, drag the mesh into the window. You'll want to unpack it, and then remove its animator. Now here's the longest part of creating an NPC, which is posing it to the rig. You'll want to select each of the bones and pose it individually to match up with the pose of the NPC. The more accurate it is, the better it'll look in game. Once you are done, you'll want to hide Ford's mesh. Do not disable it, as that will completely stop all animations from working. Instead, you'll want to go to the mesh and set cast shadows to shadows only. The shadows will not actually appear in game, so don't worry. I like to parent the mesh under the geo root of the NPC, as it makes the NPC look cleaner. Now is the final part until your NPC will actually work in-game. You want to parent all of the bones on the mesh to the appropriate bones on the physics rig, which is usually under the game object named Physics. If you are unsure where a bone goes, check its position and see what it moves. Then that may help you better understand where to put it. You do not have to parent every single bone to something on the physics rig. Once you have parented a set of bones, you can move the physics bone to make sure it maps correctly. Then, undo it, and put it back in its original position, so it doesn't screw anything up. If your NPC does not have a specific bone, like the jaw for example, find the specific bone and lock its position and rotation. However, my NPC has a jaw, so I will leave these at the default. Now that we've parented everything, we need to make sure it actually follows the bones correctly. Put the game object back in the scene, and press play. If it raggles correctly and moves around with all the bones, then you've done it. Now we're ready to move on to putting it into a file. In this scene, use the custom items tab to create a custom items game object. Then, drag the prefab and parent it under the custom items game object. Make sure the prefab has that 0, 0, 0 position. Next, use the item settings menu, click on the custom items object, and add your settings. Make sure that the name and hierarchy is the exact same name as the name of your game object, otherwise it will not spawn in game correctly. Once you have finished, you can drag the custom items game object into the assets window. Then, you can assign it an asset bundle, and build it if you are ready. If you want to add AI settings, skip to the end of the video. To get started with holographic NPCs, open up the examples folder, the NPCs folder, the base folder, and select the Omni Projector. Drag them into the scene. Next, unpack the prefab completely, and rename it to whatever you want the NPC to be named. Then, drag the prefab into the assets window, and delete the game object in the scene. In order to make a custom NPC, you need a rigged mesh. Next, open up the object you dragged into the assets window earlier. Then, 
Drag the mesh into the window. You want to unpack it and then remove its animator. Now here's the longest part of creating NPC, which is posing it to the rig. You'll want to select each of the bones and pose it individually to match up with the pose of the NPC. The more accurate it is, the better it'll look in-game. Once you are done, you will want to hide the Omni's mesh. Do not disable it, as that will completely stop all animations from working. Instead, you will want to go to the mesh and set cast shadows to shadows only. The shadows will not actually appear in game, so don't worry. Now is the final part until your NPC will work in game. You want to parent all of the bones onto the appropriate bone on the skeleton rig. You do not have to parent every bone to the skeleton rig. It can still be parented to its same parent. For the Omni, do not re-parent bones, as that will completely break animations. When you're finished, open up the Scenes menu and drag the object into the scene. Press play and make sure that it follows the animations correctly. If it does, you are ready to move on to the next step. In this scene, use the Custom Items tab to create a Custom Items Game Object. Then, drag the Prefab and parent it under the Custom Items Game Object. Make sure the Prefab has that 0, 0, 0 position. Next, use the Item Settings menu, click on the Custom Items Object, and add your settings. Make sure that the name and hierarchy is the exact same name as the name of your game object, otherwise it will not spawn in-game correctly. Once you have finished, you can drag the Custom Items Game Object into the Assets window. Then, you can assign it an asset bundle, and build it if you are ready. If you want to add AI settings, skip to the end of the video. To change the behavior, open up the prefab, find the behavior game object, and look at the script. To change sound effects for most NPCs, you will use the SFX tab. However, if you are using a Ford based NPC, and use face anim is enabled on the face animation tab, you will use the sound effects there. change the type of combat the NPC uses, look for aggro state and change it to whatever you want. If you want to change how the NPC passively reacts to the player, look for engaged mode. For example, on forwards, if you set it to mirror, they will copy your movements. Finally, to change what the NPC aggro's on, look for aggro on NPC type and change the list of NPCs to what you want to attack. You are able to use any of these other settings, so customize your NPC as much as you want. Now, to change what other NPCs attack it, look for the trigger game object. From there, you can change the NPC type and that will control what other NPCs attack it. 